and started out today on a very different trail. I was looking into the Nightcap on Minjimble official documentary and basically there was a query that someone had made and I thought, well, uh, yes, why don't I see if it is put back up again, if there's any copy on YouTube and if not, upload an edited version for comment. So I did a quick search for Nightcap on Minjimble and I discovered that Dreaded Cheetah had just put out this video called Silence, Censored and Ridiculed. And I watched this one here and it led me to this link and I looked at it and I looked at the image and I thought, what? Adrian Brennock, silenced. Pete Evans, silenced. Gunnam Buddy Giacomara, silenced. All these people that are, you know, associated with the Nightcap community and what's going on and who are all these other people. So, ultimately, what is this video about? Well, it's an attempt to um, counteract the bad press thrown in with um, anti-vax 5G and all the other stuff. Like uh, you've got doctors presenting good valuable information and then you've got extremists on the other side like uh, sovereignty extremist Gunnambuddy Giacomara and you've got Max Egan and oh Adrian, Adrian Brennock, the developer of Nightcap. And at the end there's the nice little spiel about the Nightcap community. Now, um, yes, it's a two hour long video and quite... Um, an effort to listen to and in watching it I realized who Max Egan's uh, video editors are. Same style, same format, same overlay with negative impacting images. I mean if you watch it you're constantly seeing cartoons and jokes with the most grotesque depressing images, babies with needles coming in on all directions. I mean while they're talking, there's constant flashes of going into these negative images. And in the background, there's also this annoying undertone that uh, after an hour, I had to actually mute it because I wanted to see how much valid information they would be presenting and from whom and how much was throw in the promotional attitudes of a few select people where they want to counteract the um, mainstream media's narrative. Now, you know what? I'm not uh, very much for a lot of mainstream, but uh, they don't get everything wrong, you know? Some things they actually get wrong, and some of the points they actually bring out, especially about Pete Evans, I can't say that I disagree with them. I really can't say that I do disagree with them. So this image here, if you're living in Mount Burrell, to actually see Adrian Brennock with a cross over his mouth because he's been gagged would kind of make you want to gag, wouldn't it? I mean, is that just kind of not the biggest insult and hypocrisy? But... In the uh, video that uh, Dreaded Cheetah put out, it was really interesting because Adrian Brannock explains why he's been gagged. And um, I was going to try and include that uh, running through the video so I can do it now and let you listen and then comment. But I don't go very well with doing those because I don't have a professional video editor like Max Egan. And... Uh, these two hippies in their van that are travelling around, dreaded cheetah. They, um, they really know what they're doing in the programming of the documentary. There's a lot of subliminal messaging going on. 
the music in the undertone. As I said, I had to turn it off. It was actually making me sick. And it was really hard to even try and watch for when the next person would say something because there's constantly flashing all these disgusting images that make you feel sick anyway. So yes, it's very, very obvious uh, when you look at it that it's um, using the credibility of some very good people like this uh, doctor here, this this woman here. Um, I don't know about the O'Neills because you know what? They're just up the road at Misty Mountains and Misty Mountains is all part of the development. And I don't know about this one here. I've never heard of her. You know, she wears hair over half her face and she's got a name that looks like it's a tribal name that's been given to her. You know, so... And... Oh, this Claire Mann, she's a vegan psychologist or something like that. Uncle Max is um, probably... See, this is where they've taken valid uh, issues and they've mixed in other people's um, opinions to try and reinforce the narrative that they want to create a, around Nightcap. And then right at the end, they even say that they support the vision. Well, I wonder if you support the vision of it being sold off to China and the Aboriginals are no more than a tourist attraction and what you've bought into is a tourist park. I wonder if you'd like that. Is that the vision? Is that the dream that you were after, dreaded cheater? Or, like so many others that buy the bullshit, think that it is actually about something real? So what does Adrian Brennock say? That back in 2015, he was gagged uh, to do with the Freedom Summits in 2015. He had to sign... Um, agreements with two he didn't get into it too much but I, I will bring that video out and make a point of it because here he is declaring that he knows he is a bankrupt he cannot speak out publicly ever for some reason we don't know why because he just sort of laughs it off and, and says you know I'm not worried by it well, the thing is that the law actually requires that a bankrupt reveal to any potential uh, business contacts that they are a bankrupt. Full disclosure. Because if you've gone into bankruptcy, that means that you really can't handle money and business too well and you have to, by law, tell them that. Is this actually the case? Well, if you don't believe me, there's called uh, Bankruptcy Act of 1966. Read that. And if you want the uh, easy version, what are my obligations? What if I receive money during my bankruptcy? What happens to my belongings? Now, you see, Mr. Adrian Brennock brags about having um, ownership in the land, the development that's worth millions of dollars. He's got memberships, uh, a membership in there in the community. All of these things are contrary to what a bankrupt should actually be able to do. He cannot participate in, um, well, if you look here, uh, I don't know whether I brought the right one up. Um, pretty much if you want to, sp you've got to, um, there's a trustee that administers your bankruptcy. Uh, and to do anything, you have to get permission from that trustee. And pretty much you cannot participate in business activities. There's a reason that you're a bankrupt and you're kind of banned from a lot of activities. So if you went to your trustee and said, I want to be a developer in a multi-million dollar project. Uh, can I do that? The trustee would laugh in his face. A legitimate trustee would laugh in his face. So as a bankrupt, I don't know how Adrian Brennock can be advertising that he has 
millions of dollars assets at his disposal. He's involved, he is a developer of the project at the high level of it. How he can participate in any of these activities as a bankrupt. And the fact that he said that he's actually gagged from speaking out publicly, well, talking in a video that goes public is still going public. So in that sense, he has also breached his gag order where he agreed that he would not speak out publicly ever. And that is by words of his own admission that he said he can never speak out publicly ever. So a publish, publicly published YouTube that has Adrian Brennock speaking in it is a breach of what he knowingly made as I will never speak publicly. Now that's according to his own statement in this video that is pretty much, as I said, it's using legitimate issues and bringing in people from the nightcap community in an attempt to debunk the mainstream media and mesmerize people into the narrative of it's all rosy and sunshine. Well, it's not. In fact, I saw this picture today that um, someone sent me that I don't know who the... Um, street artist is outside the gateway to this property but they wrote scum and it made me laugh because the community is really like I don't encourage vandalism of any sort and the rain will probably wash that chalk off which I'm sure it is only chalk so no harm no foul I mean, there's uh, a lot of chalk artists sitting around Nimbin. There's that one guy that does really good ones. So, um, yes, we've got all these legitimate doctors and vo um, uh, real issues tied in with these sovereignty extremists and cult members at the Nightcap community. We've got Adrian Brennock confessing that he's under a gag order to ever speak out publicly and yet publicly I'm watching him speak out. Words out of his own mouth. So I'm a little bit confused as to what this guy actually thinks he can actually validly do in this world, legally do. I mean, does he sit there and think, you know what, I can spin any bullshit and it's never going to catch up with me? You cannot be a developer and a bankrupt. You cannot confess that you are under a lifelong ban um, from speaking out publicly in the very video where you're speaking out publicly. It does not make sense. So either he's got his facts wrong or he's committing breaches against what he agreed to never do and that is ever speak out publicly. So that's just on um, bankruptcy. I'm not going to go into the other side of the Wollumbin Horizons liquidation and how that is just as bad as what's going on here with uh, AB. That's for another one. Let's move on to the next one. Now, this is an article by the Newcastle Herald back in uh, August 24, 2019. Accused money launderer in court by Robin Wuth, or whatever you want to name. Now, Mr. Eamon Charles Lowe has been leaving delightful comments on my channel wanting to sue me because I'm mentioning these comments, these uh, articles. And, uh, yes, once he hunts me down, uh, he's going to sue me because I'm mentioning these articles. Okay, so let me give you a little bit more, Mr. Lowe. I'm going to mention this article from the Newcastle Herald and I'm going to mention this one 
from the Brisbane Times. So you really attract attention across two states, don't you? Now, I'm only reading what's on the screen. Mr. Eamon Charles Lowe. So if you object to me reading a um, published article, I suggest you take it up with the publishers of that article. Now, let's get on to the next one. One of the ones that started it off. Max Egan is... Um, let's look at his Full Circle project. As confirmed by Max Egan, this project was shut down several years ago. It was started five years ago and it was shut down at least two, maybe three years ago, according to his confirmation by email that it is no longer operating. Now, this is supposed to be a non-profit organisation should actually appear in uh, searches on the ACNC charity register. And I also did just download the Excel document that's got over 57,000 registered charities, foundations and organisations, and not one of them is current in the name of In La Cash, Full Circle or anything like that. And even when you search the register, it never has been. Now, as a registered charity, you would also have to give your charity number to verify with people that you are a legitimate charity and not doing what is going on here. Contribute to the In La Cash Foundation that does not exist and has never existed in Australia as a registered foundation, charity or non-profit organisation. But Max Egan continues, let's contribute. Max Egan of the Crow House, under a false name, continues to take donations for a charity that has never existed for a project that shut down years ago. He also gives you a bank account in the name of that foundation. That's in uh, New South Wales. Now this address here, 9 Alcott Street, Parkwood. I don't know whose address that is, but that's actually a home address. We know that Max Egan doesn't even uh, live at that address. We already know where Max Egan lives, and it's certainly not at 9 Alcott Street in Parkwood. So whose address is he using as the supposed foundation address that doesn't even exist. Now, this is not my comments because um, search the ACNC register. It will give you any old listings too. It's not going to just say, oh, well, it's only the ones that are currently registered. It's the ones that have ever been registered. He has never had it as a registered non-charitable organisation and therefore he has been taking in donations under a false name. Now further to that taking in donations under a false name, he is also conducting commerce and telling people to call it a donation by paying into the In La Cash Foundation that doesn't actually exist. So thereby, he's actually trying to earn a commercial income, hide it behind a charity that doesn't exist and not have to declare that income uh, uh, for consideration for paying tax. Now, these are deliberate actions. I'm sure that Max Egan might turn around and say, oh, you know, I don't know how to do, uh, edit the website. That shouldn't be up there. I didn't mean to do it. Well, the thing is that he's got all these people that are working regularly to update his website, uh, relink all his videos. If there was any serious issues and concerns about taking money for foundations that don't exist, 
he would have got rid of those pages straight away because it is illegal to do that and he certainly doesn't want to leave stuff up there that is advertising how illegal it is. Yet I still am dumbfounded as to how these people actually think that it's not that transparent, that seriously, Max Egan is trading under a fake name, taking in donations for a foundation charity that doesn't exist for a project he started and stopped years ago. He's conducting commerce and telling people to consider it a donation to the In La Keshe Foundation that doesn't exist. And yet how is it that these people don't think that these things can be seen by other people? Because they like to say that you're all asleep, you're all too dumb, you, you know, they're the only smart ones that can figure it out, so listen to what they say because anyone else is bullshit. You know, Max Egan is saying what I'm saying is bullshit. You know what, I'm a real person. I've always stood in my own truth and walked my own walk. He's hid behind a fake name and a character he's created. And it's not just because he went online and he wanted to protect himself. He lived that way in real life before he even became known to anybody. So, the idea to raise a concern about people that are conducting foundations, taking in donations under the guise of, you know, what Max Egan is, a false name and a non-existent charity. I mean, could you get much more obvious? Why has he not been stopped before now? And the introduction of cryptocurrencies too, to enable, enable what I would consider more money laundering and tax evasion. Now these are very serious offences and they will be dealt with by the proper bodies. This is um, something that uh, I am taking further first thing Monday morning. I'm uh, going to see certain uh, individuals and uh, make a few complaints about the activities of certain other individuals. So when they come knocking on your door with a summons, you'll know where it's come from, won't you? Because the time's up for trying to... You, look, you start peeling back the activities of the members of the Nightcap cult. Uh, it's not a very nice thing to look at. And uh, I realise that it's very difficult for people to speak out in the community. When I thought about uploading the Nightcap community one, which I will upload, and you can put comments there, but I dare say they might make a complaint and get it pulled down. And besides, I don't want you to be putting comments in a public place where you can actually be uh, targeted. I do not want you to be targeted, and I do not want you to give them any more to target. Because uh, it's time to turn the tables. You know, it's time for them to realise that their day in the sun is over. I've created a um, email address. It's a little link up the top here and I'll leave it in the um, description below. Public opinion on Nightcap. That's the email address. Uh, I put it up pretty much for, you can send me an email you can add pretty much to your opinion in the community. I can gather the weight of the public opinion and protect your privacy from intimidation from those who would actually try and get you to shut up. And it would be very helpful to gather this from people in the Mount Burrow community and the larger area your public opinion on this nightcap on Minjimbul community. The weight of your opinion in perhaps even a month or two 
may actually go to help and aid bring a lot of these issues to a head so that they then can be dealt with and well let's just not go into it too much because you know what a good poker player never reveals their hand <laughs> so if you've uh, got an opinion on uh, the nightcap on Minjimble send me an email with, at the link below if you've got a concern about the activities of Max Egan report him to the um, governing bodies raise a concern this is your legal right and uh, as for the others well I suppose we'll just have to wait and see what um, further investigations come up with and as for Mr Adrian Brannock well what can I say I mean I'm surprised that this man has been so stupid to publicly announce that he knew he was under a lifelong ban to never speak publicly and he has done not only in this video where dreaded cheetah have um, introduced him but in all these other ones on the nightcap on Minjimble in all of these where he's bragging about all these multi-million dollar assets and everything that he's got at his fingertips and is a bankrupt now I'm sure the people that bankrupted him would be actually wanting some of all those millions he's got a share of this is why a bankrupt cannot conduct activities and what happens if you earn money sorry which one what if I receive money during my bankruptcy was he sharing those millions with um, well I'm just going to put up uh, tell you a version of what I've been told from one particular person is the events behind what may have brought about Adrian Brannock's bankruptcy as I say it's a version there are millions of people in the world which means there are millions of versions I suppose you could consider that then in a sense kind of like a hypothetical so let's look at it in the hypothetical so hypothetically a person goes out and they buy a really expensive place on the Gold Coast they borrow the money from a place and then they go back and they decide you know what I'm going to try and claim sovereignty here in this place and I'm not going to pay the money I borrowed well the people that borrow lent the money to this person didn't like the fact that this person didn't want to pay it back and tried to claim under sovereignty that he didn't have to pay it back now it all went miserably wrong and somewhere down the track the tax man came in too and said you know what you owe us heaps of money not quite sure how you actually achieve such a debt with the tax office but then that might go to maybe not declaring all incomes or something like that this is a hypothetical situation a version of what may have happened and then maybe after making all these outlandish and ridiculous claims and ending up bankrupt 
He was forced into signing gag orders for the rest of his life to say that he would never try that shit again. Again, all hypothetical. Don't really know. I mean, Mr. Brennock has not actually told us that part. He thinks it's a little bit of a joke, you know. You know, but he, he's doing fine. It was a spiritual war. Spiritual? Seriously. Uh, I've seen this man in action, and uh, I wouldn't call it spiritual. I'd call it far from spiritual. Like uh, in other hypothetical scenarios, this same man would probably have a couple of big thug bodyguards that go around to intimidate people and actually carry out threats. And he might even have some killer trained dogs deliberately trying to protect himself because he knows there would be people out there that, well, they get a little bit pissed off with this smart ass little creep trying to rip everybody off all the time. Yeah, I think I'd need protection too. But you know, there's nothing that can protect him from the stupidity of opening his own mouth and saying these things out of his own mouth. He's under a lifelong public ban. He's admitting he knows this and he opens his mouth in public. I mean, isn't YouTube public? I mean, it's not private, is it? Or am I not understanding the terms of what public actually is? But then again, Mr. Brannock doesn't understand either the obligations of a bankrupt, does he? If he did, he wouldn't be sitting there saying how he's breached them in so many ways. Anyway, I think uh, I've uh, informed enough about those three. If you want to have your say on the community, That is the nightcap on Minjimbul cult community and even members of the community if you wish to comment, if you wish to tell me how I've got things wrong, tell me, well, can at least one of you send a letter that isn't so infantile and mind-numbingly childish that I might actually take it serious? Hmm? And I'm not even talking about Billy the Goat either. He's full of shit too, just as much as you are. And he's under the under the telescope too. Don't you worry. I've got all angles covered. And the beauty is, you seem to be screwing yourselves by simply opening your own mouths. Anyway, Mount Burrell, send me an email if you want to have your say. And you know what? really have your say. You are going to be protected from bullying, harassments and being shut down and I can bring together your voice, your public opinion and can present it as one when the time comes. Plant the seeds now because you know what happens in springtime. Things start to shoot, then comes summer Boom, they start to really flourish. And, you know, come the new year, well, that's bushfire season when things can get burnt down. You get my drift? Not literally. Metaphorically. <laughs> okay, I'm going to leave it there. Take it easy, everybody. Bye.